the Star Wars CCG players, fans, and Saturday afternoon in the USA aficionados of Twitch. Uh, Garrett Larson here, dead body, uh, ready to get a retro game on the 2024 Retro League. This is game six with Timo, Timo Dussel, Dylan, who's basically good at every format I'd seem to see, versus Jason McSherry, Mick6448. Um, both players are 5-0 and as of right now, based on the strength of schedule. It looked like Jason was in first place, Timo was in second. So the winner of this game will likely be the winner of the event, which is the prize for that, I believe, is a uh, uncut sheet. Um, this is the Premier through Hoth format. So this is going to be a little different. You know, the folks who are used to watching open, used to hearing me commentating in open are going to hear a lot more. This game's a little bit slower. It's a little bit different right now. We see both players starting with a standard 2-0 site. Uh, Jason with the Wampa Cave. Timo with Obi-Wan's Hut. Oh, so there is a final confrontation. I apologize. So the winner of this is going to face Matthew Tennyson, who is already 6-0. Um, Jason starts his turn, activates three force, drops Kashyyyk, drops the Cantina. So he actually got some activation early, which is a can be an issue sometimes in this format. Like this is the early days of Star Wars, before there was location pullers, before some of the other stuff going on. So... He does give Timo six force on turn one, though, which is big. And Timo dropping a Twix right away. Nope. I apologize. Twix is a you know standard nomenclature in the game. Means two icons for one player, none for everybody else. So two for me, none for you. It it's, uh, makes sense if you watch the Twix commercials back in the late 90s, early 2000s when the game came out. Uh, we see Mick, Jason, activating four, or activating a seven, and hitting the immediate Monarch Lost, which costs Timo three Luke Skywalkers. Ouch. Um, a lot of this uh, format early for light side is going to run on trying to hit some, some of the Destiny Adders. In battle and a lot of those use Luke so that's uh, ouch so Jason causes three force loss with that mana that's a that's a brutal hit there, there's no nice way to put that that one hit real hard um, so obviously early on in this game there's gonna be a lot of just throw cards down draw up get some stuff going as Timo's got another another two for out there as another you have four Masasi ruins um, I did just find out earlier today, as we see Obi-Wan Kenobi going down to the cantina. And Timo just draws some cards. That's a little bit of a risky play. This is still a format and era where Vader, Darth Vader plus the circle is now complete, is super common. And right now, that'll just put Obi out of play. Like, Dylan will have to count on having enough senses to keep himself alive for that. Instead, Jason goes with a Victory Class Star Destroyer to Kashyyyk, throws out the Hollow Table. They've actually gotten enough sights out. They're both activating a decent amount. I mean, Jason draws one, but he's activating nine. Dylan's activating 11. We see the Quick Drain of Two going on. Um, I see in chat about the destiny adders uh yeah in the early game the the first few sets i think all of the destiny adders required luke i think um i think protector was the first one that didn't as we see the millennium falcon with han going up against the uh, victory class at kashik and jaron webb Added as a co-pilot, so Timo draws Destiny. I mean, he gets a Battle Destiny out of here. And it is a three. There's the sense we were talking about. 
that was an aggressive play by Jason, just putting the naked Star Destroyer up there. Like, it's tough to not drop, be not be able to draw Battle Destiny. Is still, that's always been an aggressively risky play. You know, it, it, this that's just how this game goes. Um, I did hear for the folks who are tuning in who like retro action, um, Frodo Light, Brian Avery, Hollow Theater Guest of the Year. And some of the folks from the Star Wars Discord book club are starting a retro YouTube channel. Um, it's going to be called, and I apologize for giving the name, and I wrote it down and then I forgot it. It's going to be called Renegade Free Radio, named after the Renegade Squad Corporal Beezer led. And Jason just activates and draws some. Ooh, that's that's a bad feeling. That, that's he's got 18 cards in hand if Timo's got a grim tash here this is going to make and uh, make some things end poorly and there's the grim tash so Timo goes with the grim tash lost with the 18 card hand hoping to just kill some things and I'm not positive he did he does we see a Vader, we see a Vader's lightsaber, we see a circle is now complete. Um, that's something that that was a that was an aggressive play by Timo as well. I think I might have gone for the use just to, you know, Jason had to draw cards. He was drawing a bunch of cards, punching ten of those back down, and not you know, hoping you take out what he's trying for after you drain for four seems like it might have been a decent play, but I, I think either way, I mean, the, the Grim Tash was going to be potentially bad anyways, and going for the Lost, if you can hit, you know, a bunch of, if he'd have had the duplicates, that would have hit real hard. Uh, we see the Judlin Waste go off the reserve and an altar off the reserve to the Drain of Two at Kashyyyk. <laughs> And there goes a circle off the top and a Vader's saber off the top to the drain at the cantina. Um, as I say in Renegade Radio, looks like they're going to be dropping on YouTube uh, next week, uh, likely next weekend. And the initial plan is to chat about the this event, you know, the, the premiere through Hoth, how it went, what was going on. Yeah, Obi's uh, Timo. I think Timo's probably sitting on the fact that there was nothing to stop a sense. All right, and there's the neighboring. Oh, neighboring for free. I assume he's going to the. Yep, he's going to the Wampa Cave. So he's going to continue to have a drain of two there, although he is giving up the drain of two now at the cantina, but. Timo's ahead right now. Like, Timo just needs to keep this going. If I'm Jason, I might move Vader into Obi's hut. Like, that's a drain of four. Just turn that drain right back on and start making it... making it difficult. Yeah, there's a lot of spies in the format, but I don't think Jason had any. Um, I mean, we can... Go back and look at his hand real quick. That guy, Evax, Alter. Oh, so he did have an Alter for the sense. Lieutenant Pole, who's not a spy. Tentacle, Evader, Vader Saber, Sniper, Captain Lennox, Grand Moff Tarkin, Tyrant, Mahdi, Third Marker, Victory Class, Devastator, Piet, Taj. Yeah, he did not have any spies. So Obi is safe there for a little while. <laughs> the dog is right now mildly perturbed because we've got... Uh, some people here visiting a foster kitten, and that means there are people here, and he doesn't get to see them, and he is not happy about them. But here, come here. Come here, Ritz. Come here. Yes. All right. So we see the drain of two at the Wampa Cave, Lieutenant Cabell, and I have you now going away. And the drain at Kashyyyk, there's a Darth Vader off the top and a tentacle off the top. Uh, Jason's got a... <laughs> All right, so there's Wire and Serper and Undercover. 
Now, interestingly enough, Timo must have some sort of plan with uh, the sense as we saw the sniper in hand. We saw a sniper and an altar. So this will make for an interesting... And, yeah, I'm not sure why I was looking for spies for dark side like anybody can just play to the wampa cave that's how that works it's been a long morning of doing some other stuff and thinking is uh slow and there's out of commission from hand just to place ds613 out of play well random plus three pilot that's all he's in there for jason's activation's a little light right now like that's the biggest thing i think he's dealing with is he's not activating enough to he had the ships, he had a lot of stuff in hand. Like, he could come down hard on that Falcon, but he doesn't have anything to do with it. And there goes a sniper from the out of commission as well, and that's just Timo running out a couple fives, and oh, I'll put something out of play, I'll get a five back in my deck. Like, out of commission's a super easy, easy trackable five in the format. Um, and so we see... Jason activate, goes for sniper on Myron. I expect we're going to see a sense here. Or not. So he's just going to let that go. And there is a two and a five. So Wyron's dead. And we're going to see a drain of four here. And Jason's got to do something right now to start getting back on the board. Like, honestly, I wouldn't hate just drawing or just drawing a couple here and saving. So next turn you can go heavy into space and go after the Falcon. We see Rogue One go away from hand and Timo loses his own cantina from hand. Um, Rogue One's a little bit of a surprise. I wonder if he's running... I don't know. I guess if you're running with Luke and running that out, and there's saber, lightsaber proficiency and wedge, I wonder if he's holding on to the sense, if he's going to let that sniper go to hold for the sense for the Ellis. You know, like, Jason's got the third marker in hand. I almost think you've got to deploy it. Like, you need a couple more force right now. So I'll put out the third marker, and especially, like, if his hand, he doesn't have the Ellis right now, but, like, and we see him put the third marker out. He's, all right. See, he's thinking. I'm thinking. You know, you, you need money. <laughs> Lieutenant Pole Tritum. I don't remember what the non-V does. There's something with spies. I remember he serves. Uh, each control phase is for the same site and undercover spy. You can attempt to break the spy's cover. And General Taj. So he's giving himself four ability. Um... I don't know that I'd necessarily put anything else out. Like, I might save and then plan to try and go after the Falcon in space and just go with raw power. He had two Star Destroyers. He had some stuff, and yep, that's exactly what he's doing. He says, no, I'm going to save some force. Like, uh, Tritum is ability one, yes. And we see Dylan activate one, use Gift of the Mentor to take a saber into hand, so... I don't know if he's trying to kind of drain race. Yeah, he can be moved by Obi, but he's got a neighbor and Obi in there, and he already used the one one neighbor, and so it's possible. I think Jason's also running a little light and just has to try and do something. Goes the Evader from hand and Lars Moisture Farm from reserve deck. There's a drain of two at Kashyyyk. There's an altar off the top and another Darth Vader. So... I mean, Jason's down to... He's lost two Vaders plus the one on table. And there's lightsaber, saber proficiency on Obi. Like, Timo says, you know what? I can drain for four, too. Let, let, let's see this go. And... Right now, they're just kind of trading off drains, and Timo's slightly ahead. It, it's very close, but Timo right now has 26 cards down and 14 in hand jason's got 23 down and 11 in hand so timo's about four or five cards up 
right now and they're draining for similar amounts so Jason's gonna need to figure out the math here without opening himself up too badly for a beatdown because uh, Nabron with Obi would be pretty brutal here right now you move Lieutenant Pole you beat the heck out of General Taj and we see Calfal come down there mirrors and Timo's I think just thinking his way through here and there's Wedge so Timo's spreading Wedge into the cantina come here ribs come here Commander Vanden Willard joining Wedge in, in the cantina hey. and most Eisley so he can start a shuffle in that's going to be obnoxious for uh, for Jason like you're almost going to have to give up that drain of four and cut it down to a drain of three just to keep Dylan from draining you for three and shuffling guys around and now Dylan draws up to 15 so he's got a handful of cards here and throws down another out of commission just to do some more randomness. There goes Vader's Saber. So now you, well, actually, lightsabers, excuse me, are not subject to the uniqueness rule. So with Vader's Saber out of play, he can still deploy another Vader's Saber. Um, Jason's going to have to do something, though, because you can't just leave the good general and Lieutenant Pole there. That's uh, that's bad waiting to happen. So we do see Drain of Four. Coming in at Obi's hut. There's the Echo War Room from hand. Obi Wan's lightsaber from hand. Force is strong with this one from hand. And Gift to the Mentor from Reserve. Those are all solid losses because, like, I don't think Timo he doesn't need the Force right now, and you don't want to give up that sight. I don't think you're counting on Obi dying. Like, I think you think Obi's gonna live. Force is strong with this one is uh, Destiny Adder with Luke, and you saw three Lukes die already. There's probably at best one. And then Gift to the Mentor, same thing. Like, it, you need Luke, and you probably don't have him. You've got the Ober Saber out. See the Tyrant and a Victory Class go down. I expect we'll see Admiral Mahdi as a pilot go down for one. Mahdi goes on the Victory Class, which is a little bit of a surprise, because... The tyrant, there's evac, so now you got forfeit fodder. I'm like, if you're going to lose one, like you'd rather lose the victory class than the tyrant. But with evac, so now you've got some forfeit fodder and a huge power advantage. So we see the battle going on at Kashyyyk. Now, Jason did leave himself in a real bad spot at Hoth, though. As he's got Lieutenant Pole and General Taj... And they're alone. And Obi-Wan is going to potentially just move him. So Jason wins this battle by 12. He's going to lose, I'm sure, Officer Evax to the forfeit. Because Timo did draw a battle this Timo Timo's down 12, though. He's might. We see him lose Han. We see him lose Jaron Webb and then the Falcon. Yeah, Officer Forfeit Fodder, that is exactly what he is. I think and Jason might have forgotten about Obi's move away text. And I'm pretty sure Timo is uh, very happy right now, assuming Timo remembered it. Um, but as I said at the start of this, Timo plays every format out here, and he plays them all well. So... I'm not going to count on Timo for getting something. Um, <laughs> as I said, Timo, T Timo knows all. Timo sees all. Timo's about to beat the heck out of poor General Taj, and that's going to hurt. Like it's going to be three overflow plus some. Oh, all right. So instead, we're going to sorry about the mess. I don't think Timo remembered Obi's text. Because that's just a waste of that sorry. Like, there's absolutely no benefit to that sorry. You're gonna, you were just gonna beat up Taj anyways. And <laughs> moving Lieutenant Pole to the two zero is great. 
let him sit at a site he does nothing at. So apparently we all overestimated Timo, and when he watches this later, he's going to do the, uh, you know, Captain Petard head smack because he definitely did not need to waste that sorry. He could have held on to it. But we do see the drainage two at the cantina. Tarkin and Dr. Abazan going off the top. <laughs> Somebody in chat, Timo's rubbish. Now that's just not even... Timo is an outstanding player, and you don't get this good by making mistakes often. So Timo made this one. He's going to learn from it as we see the battle going on at the third marker. Swings at Taj. Five and a five says the good general is hit and forfeit zero. And now... If Jason doesn't have a gick, this is going to be a hard peel. Like, because this is going to be seven plus Timo's draw, and I'm betting it's a five. Oh, it's a three. Okay. So, if he doesn't have the gick, it's a ten force peel, and he hasn't really picked up much since his hand was revealed, and he didn't have a gick then. So, we'll see if he's got one here as Tag, tag or Taj goes away, and... I'm waiting... The fact that he didn't uh, snap it yet, he is peeling 10. That's going to... Ouch. And he does say in chat that'll pretty much do it. He's down to 18 cards total, and Timo's got 21 force. Plus, Timo's got 30 cards. Like Timo's got a 12-card advantage and is going to start draining real hard here. Jason needs... Jason needs to do something amazing this turn. Like, he needs to hit something, and it needs to go good as the Devastator goes out of play without commission. That's, you know, out of commission is what it is. Jason needs to do something big this turn with six cards in hand. Like, this is the turn you need to go. Ellis Vader, Circle Obi, move him to the fifth marker, and start doing something because he's got to do something. You, you, you're not going to win otherwise. But he will drain for five here. And he only leaves one destiny, which might be okay. Like, leaving one destiny says he's doing something. Yep, and that is the Renegade Free Radio, as I said, is going to be focused on the retro format. What I was told is it'll be a... The first episode will be talking about this event, kind of, you know, retrospective in it, and then the next episode is planned to talk about the next event in the retro, which is going to be Premiere through Cloud City with some modifications. I think uh, banning Asteroid Sanctuary and a couple of the insert cards, and, you know, I, I'll be honest, I looked at the retro event, I grew up in that era, like I played a bunch at that time, but... I only have so much time in my day to play games now, and I could not sign up for the retro event. But fortunately, I get to get some of it this way and, you know, play it vicariously by watching Timo forget what Obi-Wan's text does. Uh, there we see Tarkin come down into the cantina against Wedge and Commander Vanden Willard. Captain Piet going to hang out with them. So that says no Nabron or no Ellis. And Captain Lennox alone, I, I guess you figure you're just going to lose Captain Lennox to the Battle Destiny and you're, he'll probably cover power, I, I guess? Like, Timo's got 13 cards in hand though, the, the odds of him not having another character to throw down there is uh, bad. That, that was a... Uh, that was a late risk play, all right? And Timo draws the five for Battle Destiny, which means Tarkin's going to have to go. And you're going to have Captain Piet. Yeah, Jason... Jason YOLO'd there. That 10-force overflow was somewhat brutal. There, there wasn't much he could do about that. I, I'm, I'll be honest, I think I would have preferred Captain Lennox in the Cantina just to 
give himself the ability to draw Battle Destiny there. Uh, we see the altar for Saber Proficiency, and there's a sense from Dylan. And, yep, that's... The, this is pretty much going to seal it right here. That's uh, a five, drain a four. And we know Timo's drawing a five for the Battle Destiny whenever he starts it at the third marker, so I expect the rest of his force is just going to be any dudes in hand are going to come down on Captain Lennox and make this run. Or with the five, he's just going to take out Vader, because why not? Or just throw Van and Willer undercover. Sure. This was a lot of options, and there we see Jason does concede. Congratulations, Timo. Timo finishes the... This retro event, 6-0, and uh, he will be playing against uh, Matthew Tennyson, maybe? Scrolling back up in chat real quick. Uh, yep, he will be playing Matthew Tennyson in a final confrontation later, whenever they schedule it. Um, congratulations to both players. Uh, this was definitely a well-played on both sides. Timo, Timo got ahead. Timo got what he needed to, even after losing three Lukes early. And that was all it took. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you all have a blast. Have a great weekend, guys.